If you've got any thoughts on buying a new driver anytime soon, then the possibility is Callaway will be on the list. Paradigm this year has been a huge success for them on the tour and in retail as well. But Big Bertha 23 is also hugely successful in the right hands. I'm gonna put them both in a head to head and see why you might choose one over the other. Now, the first thing we're gonna look at is something that many of you dismiss, and that is how a product looks. But I think it's super important with these two products because they're very, very different. And the Big Bertha 23 in particular is a very different shape and profile than pretty much any other driver that's out there in that it's almost triangular-like in its shaping. Now, for me, I've got, first of all, I'm gonna look down on that quite a number of times on a tee box and I've got to be comfortable with what I'm looking at. For me, I'm little slightly off put by it. It's so different. And then you've got that amount of offset. Now the offset element is a key to making it an anti-slice, anti-fade driver. But once again, can you live with that when you're in that dress position? Because it's a big deal. Right, let's hit one. With that, first of all, get the old swing going, collect some data. I'm going to use the same shaft in both. Now, this is a standard shaft that comes in the Big Bertha 23. It's a lightweight shaft and it's also shorter than standard. So it's all aimed at control in terms of the Big Bertha 23. It's all aimed at stopping you slicing the ball. And I think there's an element that definitely works. The question is just how much. You then move into the Paradigm X. I'm gonna swap shafts and just have a little talk about that. So we've got 10 and a half degree head with exactly the same shaft in. The first thing I wanna point out is that the way in which these two clubs are weighted in terms of its positioning, are very, very different, and it was really odd what they did with Big Bertha 23 in that they shifted the weight forward. Now, weight forward generally means a sort of uh, a lower spinning version of a driver, not always best suited for people who are struggling to get the ball up in the air, which again is something that that Big Bertha 23 would be aimed at. So it's odd what they did, but it really did work and it was effective. For my initial testing, it didn't have any major impact on the weight. The ball launch spin stayed consistent. I'm not really sure of the logic behind it, but in terms of Paradigm X, it's a complete opposite. The weight is shifted right to the very much the back end, which is exactly where we expect it to see in this type of driver. Then you're looking down on the Paradigm X, which again is a bit more elongated than a traditional driver. It's a slightly odd shape yet again, but you've got to ask yourself, you've got two drivers now sat at a dress, you're both wanting to achieve the same thing, which is predominantly trying to find fairways as far down that fairway as we can possibly get. But you're now thinking to yourself, well, can I live with either of these in terms of looks? Now for me, even though I'm not massively fond on what I'm looking down on right now, I would still be drawn towards the Paradigm X over the Big Bertha 23. Now the other noticeable difference, well certainly is the sound, I wasn't gonna talk about that then, but you can certainly pick it up, it's very different. But the other noticeable difference is the less visible offset that you see on Paradigm X. Now Paradigm X, although is isn't classed itself as an all out anti-slice driver or whatever you wanna call it, um, it's a uh, draw bias, whatever your terminology wants to be, it, it's aimed at that, that's what it's trying to do. But it does it in a visually different way at least anyway, and I don't know what uh, in terms of the exact measurements are in terms of offset, but it's not as visible. And for me, I have to make adjustments when I'm playing the Big Bertha driver in tweaking my sort of setup, moving the club head around, trying to find what I feel like is pointing at the target. And that's the one big off put that I've got. Whereas this, I'm pretty much square down the line and not doing a lot different. That's another super shot that we'll get to later on in the data. But the big difference for me, and I mentioned it very, very briefly on the first shot, because it was so noticeable, 
is the way the two sound. They did a weird thing in Paradigm, in my opinion, all of it, in terms of hybrids, fairways and drivers. And they got this weird sound going on, a very much softer, more muted sound. Almost so soft that when the ball went out, you sort of felt, well, did that really go? Did I really catch that drive? You know, it's like when you hit a sort of loud drive, you think, my God, that thing has flown. And then you watch the Paradigm X float, you think, oh yeah, I did actually, I got it, I caught it. But it's very weird because it is so soft, so subdued, and that ball there, and I think, I reckon even, I always say it's struggle in terms of acoustics inside on you listening to anything. But I think it's that noticeable. We might even be able to pick that up on camera. So, already, I've hit two balls with this, and I'm bending down to pick a third, because I am much more drawn towards this driver. I can't lie. The question is, that wasn't the best of swings. The question is, what separates them in terms of performance? I already collected the data and I'm seeing differences, but the differences aren't about distance, they're about something else, but it's quite key and it's quite important when you're making this kind of decision. Right, do you know what? With this kind of head-to-head, -head, it's very simple and it's very straightforward. Really, what we're looking at is looking at the data to try and break it down. So I'm going to collect some more with uh, shots wise with both clubs and we'll get a good old comparison and see where we end up. What I want to know from you is, what are you drawn towards right now in terms of that driver market? Have you already gone in this year? We're obviously late on in the year in terms of 2023. I don't think I've ever seen a year where so many manufacturers have released a new lineup. So have you delved in already or are you still deliberating? Are you waiting for the sort of December time when you can sometimes grab yourself a bit of a bargain when you know there's a new lineup coming in that January time? So let me know where you're at or are you still considering perhaps one of these two? Today's video is brought to you in partnership with Hot Golf, the online golf megastore, bringing you the hottest deals in golf and of course the clubs featured in today's video. Find the link to the Hot Golf website in the description below and check out some incredible giveaways and offers. Right, so these head-to-heads, -heads, I've tried to keep them short and sweet and I hope that's something that you want. We're not trying to drag these out and as I said, you know, it's pretty much into the data where it gets really interesting. Those opinions that I've just had about the looks, about the sound, they're all very subjective and you go out and do your own kind of, uh, as you would, choices on that kind of thing. But into the data, it got a bit interesting for me. Um, start off with the BB23. Um, I always point out, or I have been doing of late, that I'm making some swing changes with testing the tips channel. And uh, although I'm happy with what's going on in terms of my own trying to work that I'm trying to put in, it has meant that I've just lost a little bit of club head speed at the moment. And I'm a little bit down in terms of yardages and that's right throughout the bag. I just said that on an iron video that I've done. So anyone who's long-term sort of viewer of the channel will notice I'm sort of maybe 10, 15 yards down from driver. That's nothing to do with the clubs. That's to do with my swing speed being quite a bit down at the moment while I'm trying to work in those swing changes. Let's hope it's for the good in the long run. Right. BB23, carry distance, 226 on average, um, pretty consistent across the line, longest ball being 231 carry. Club head speed, like I said, way down on, I'm 93.2, I uh, was swinging a club head around 97, so that's where you sort of big drop off. So that kind of ratio of club head speed, ball speed at 140 and that carry distance, really, really good numbers, very efficient in terms of the driver. Spin rate is high to uh, eight spin, so that's not optimized, but we've got a high launching ball, 14 degrees launch, 91 peak height. Um, so they're not, that for me, it's not a driver that I would be fitted into because that spin number's too high, that ball is too high for me in terms of peak height. But a BB23 is doing everything it is designed to do for the golfer that it's aimed for. Then switch up into the Paradigm X. Slightly down on carry 221 um, and half a mile or a bit more slower in terms of swing speed, ball speed 138.9. So again, a couple of, maybe a mile or two drop off and it's very relative to that club head speed, how fast I'm swinging it. Slightly higher spin number as well of 2.9, um, launching at 13.2 and a peak height of 85. So at this point, there's not a lot to split them, in my opinion, other than the swing that I've put on them. 
um, that's the difference and it's often the difference but I talk about um, the dispersion which again front to back is is important to me and I think that you'll see a ball crept in in a Paradigm X of just a 206 yard carry which has had a massive overall negative impact on the averages for the Paradigm X we take that one out of the equation and there's uh, there's a considerable difference but it's there and now I'm going to put on what I'm looking at on the screen now is the tightness of dispersion down range now apart from the ball that you see that is very short that's that 206 ball you'll see the other five shots that hit with the Paradigm X are very much on the fairway they're very much down the center stripe the BB23 which are the red dots you're looking at are very much sort of right of target and they're very much wider um, in terms of the distance between them all the spread and that was a big thing that I noticed in the test I always get a, a fair bit of warm up before I actually start recording data so although we've only seen five shots with each or whatever it is then I've hit plenty of balls off screen before we start the biggest problem I have with Big Bertha 23 is just the shaping of it and the offset and I said it with its predecessor and it may be just a personal thing to me is when I sit that ball at a dress I'm always messing around with it just to get it sat or to try and get it to be sat square and because of that I often found that I was hitting a shot shape that was either a pull with a closed face or I still managed to leave it open and uh, leave it still moving out to the right hand side I didn't do that with the Paradigm X and I only think the difference is is that I stood at a dress I'm not fiddling around with the thing I'm not trying to make it work in terms of it just sits nicer as soon as I stand up to the ball and it was noticeable both off camera off track man before I started recording data and then in the short space of shots we hit it was still very much very prevalent so the two clubs do in my opinion what they're supposed to do and they're very very helpful in areas like launch like ball speeds off slow swing speeds which is what we've put on today don't forget we'll be losing a little bit of club head speed as well with the shorter shaft that we put into both of these to try and get that extra control but overall both very efficient in terms of ball speed relative to club head speed good launch angle but for me me the Paradigm X would be much more suited just because of the way it sits at address minor detail but quite important when you think about it on how many times that's what you're going to be looking down at on the tee and you've got to have confidence that you know you're aiming at least in the right direction and then it's all down to that swing of yours right like i said very simple very straightforward it's um head to head season very much at the moment because i know a lot of you are still asking to see certain things this was one that was requested by a number of viewers there it is if you've got any other things you'd like to see compared then by all means stick it in the comment section down below and I'll do my best to get something together and at least give you some kind of guide on how they both perform in my hands right as ever thanks for watching I'll see you all soon